Okay. Yeah, that's always a mistake. Hey, what you doing today? Let's go out for lunch. <laughs> um, hey, um, I don't know. The team is slipping, man. No water here today. What's going on? Where? Oh, they, they hit it. <laughs> They're just trying to mess with me. Well, give me a break. It's funny, when things don't go the way we should, there's always a tension. They're like, what is he doing? He's taking a break. Amen. Relax. You all good? So is today a holiday or something? It's a whole lot of folks missing. Amen. Oh, it's vacation time. That's true. Anyway, awesome. I'm glad you made it today. Amen. Um we uh, have been on, call it a series, we have uh, been talking about delegated authority, amen? How many of you remember that? Three of you were listening, good. That's awesome. Anyway, <laughs> want to talk about that, amen? Um, exercising our delegated authority. And it's so important because um, I've been talking about the sovereignty of God, and we know that he's all sovereign, he's all powerful. I mean, he created the heavens and the earth and all that, but in his sovereign wisdom, he chose to work through people. Don't ask me. If it was me, I would be in total control. You should thank God I'm not God, because I would have I would have controlled. No, no, you can't. You're gonna. This is what you're gonna do, you know. But God didn't do that. And though He created the heavens and earth, He chose to delegate His authority to people. And we see it from the very beginning. We see it uh, in the garden. He delegated authority to who? To Adam, right? And then he delegated his authority to Abraham, and then to Moses, and then to David. You see it all through the Bible, right? And though he could have done it himself, because he's sovereign, he chose to work through us. And the problem is that people even today don't realize that God wants to use them and work through them. They're still praying, oh, God, do it. And he says, well, listen. I already told you who I am, what I've done. Jesus died on the cross. Come on, somebody. He rose again, has given you all the promises in the Bible, so you do it. Come on. But the reason we don't want to do it, I said last Sunday, is because we don't want the responsibility. Because somehow or another, with the old nature of the fallen Adam, we are insecure or we are afraid to fail. Is anybody here? So even though God says you can do it, we hesitate because we don't want to take the responsibility of perhaps failing. But even if you fail, you really don't fail. Right? Because God is still with you. And all you have to do is take the next level of faith and God will open the doors that he promised you he would open. And so, you know, that's kind of hard to understand. It's kind of hard for us to even, there's people that go like, man, that don't sound right. Because how is God going to give you authority and you're imperfect? Come on. And that's the other side of it. People go like, I I don't deserve authority. Well, you disqualify yourself because the fact of the matter is that you have to have faith in God's word, regardless of your emotions and regardless of what you see or what you hear. That's what faith is. Faith always takes you away from the emotional realm. And most people are used to operating in the emotional realm. No matter how many times they hear the word of God, no matter, no matter how many times they hear, hey man, you can do this, they're still waiting for the right emotional response. Oh, you're not hearing me. Yeah. And so nothing ever gets done because they're still saying, God, do something. What they're really saying is, God, 
give me the feelings and emotions so I can move forward. And God says, if I do that, you'll never grow in faith because this is about faith. How do we know all this stuff? How do we know about the sovereignty of God? How do we know, you know, that he's given us delegated authority? Because we read it. Come on. It's, it's, listen, I'm not that smart. Who said, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Ushers, escort that person out. Uh, no, but are you following me? It's because we read it. And if you read the Word of God, you have to have faith. Remember that the Word of God is useless if you don't attach your faith to it. Come on. And God says, you know what? It's not even your faith. I've given you the measure of faith. And all I'm asking you is to trust me and believe me. Not that easy. Because our mindset evolves around what we see, how we feel, what we're going through, what has happened, what has not happened. Come on. And so the Bible says we walk by what? And not by sight. So it is a walk. You have to take one step after the other. And each step is a step of, of faith. You're not going to take one step of faith and boom, you've arrived. It don't work that way. You have to take a, each step now, your faith has to always be on the word, not on your own. Like some people say, I have faith, I'm going to do this. Well, you better find yourself a Bible verse that can back that up. The good news is there's over 6,000 promises in the Bible. I'm sure you can find one, but you have to attach your faith to the word of God and not to circumstances. Is anybody here? And that's why we, we face the issues that we face. There's, there's marriage problems, there's economic problems, there are physical problems, all that kind of stuff. And, and, and we go like, man, when is this going to end? Say never. Because the minute you conquer something, you're going to go to the next level. Now, the worst thing we can do, you've heard me say it a billion times, is complain. Because if you complain, that means you don't have faith. Can I keep it real? Yeah. When you complain, you're saying, I don't believe God is going to do it. Hey, Because you have the language of faith and the language of emotions or of man. The language of faith is going to say, I believe it even though I don't see it. Come on. And then you start proclaiming it and talking about it like it already happened. Hey, somebody says, no, you know, I'll worship him when, when he does it. Well, go ahead and wait. Or you can exercise your faith by thanking him and worshiping him before it's manifested. That's the hard part. I ain't going to lie to you. It's, it's difficult. It's not easy. And I'm not saying nothing you don't know, but it, we are in a battle. It's called the fight of faith. Come on, yeah. right? So the, the, the thing that we have to realize, because we have uh, delegated authority, that it could be dangerous. Amen. Our purpose in this church is to help you mature. Because if you put a gun in a baby's hand or a child's hand, it is dangerous. Well, we got quiet up in here quick. No, it's true. It's because a lot of these things that we learn, we, we misuse them because we, we are immature. Like, for, for instance, somebody says, oh, man, I got this faith thing, and I just want a car. Not just a car, a Ferrari. It don't even have a license. You're not here. Right. That's a lack of wisdom. Right. So it's important to mature and to walk in maturity and nothing is going to mature you quicker than trials. I wish we could mature just by praying. Lord, make me mature. And then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. And you go, wait a minute. Well, that's, what's, that's how you're going to mature. How are you going to deal with the issues of life? Come on. And really, the only way that we can be uh, uh, measured in terms of maturity is by our faith. Amen. 
All right, let me change course here. <laughs> Are you all with me? And this is the important thing. Authority flows in two directions. Flows up and down. Are you all with me? So, so we, we understand that we, you know, authority comes from who? From God, right? That's upward. And then he delegates it to us, and then we use it, what? By humbling ourselves on the earth and operating in his promises and what he said. Now, we are a teaching church, so you have to pay attention. There's some times that you can, sometimes I finish preaching, I'm in the hall, and somebody comes and says, hey, what about this? I said, I spoke 15 minutes on that thing. Where, where were you? <laughs> Amen. Because we have to pay attention. I can easily get people emotionally aroused, right? And many of us have been in those churches, and sometimes we get, we, we get like that here, but the fact is that you have to learn what the Word of God is saying. You have to receive it so that you can mature in the Word so that when it's time to practice it, you're ready. Hello? And so, and so understand that the level of authority that you have has to come from your ability to submit to authority. Y'all didn't get that one. Yeah. Like people want authority. Y'all want authority. Well, listen, the way it works is that you ha the, the level of authority that God will give you is based on the level of your submission to authority. Yeah, we don't want to hear that. We just want authority. Give me authority, Lord. I, yeah, he says, okay. And then he challenges us. So we know this. I want to read from Luke chapter 7. It says, Then Jesus went with them. And I'm going to read from here until we get the bigger TV. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Say humility. Right. And then it says, therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and my servant will be healed. Next verse. For I also am a man placed under authority. Y'all, did you get that? He is saying, I acknowledge your authority and I understand your authority because I'm a man that's under authority. Come on. And that's so important because the level of, of, the, of delegated authority is going to come from you understanding that the only way God can measure your authority is by how willing you're able to submit to authority. Now, we, we're going to get into why some people don't do that in, in a minute. Amen. Then it says, uh, go back. He says, for I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. So what he is saying is, I understand authority because I, I am under authority, but I also have authority. And the reason that I know when I tell my servant to go, he'll go, is because, not because I, I have the ultimate authority, but because I know how to submit. Somebody is going to tell me to go. And if, and if I rebel against that, then my authority is going to be watered down. Because how am I going to say, uh, uh, speak authority to someone when I can't even humble myself to authority? And why is that principle important? Because I already said it. God is all powerful. He loves us. I mean, he's the creator of the heavens and earth. And yet he says, now I want to delegate this authority to you. The level of authority you receive from God is going to be determined by how much you're willing to submit to authority. Come on. 
Now, he will give you delegated authority, but you won't understand it, or you will be immature, and you will misuse it. And then when it doesn't work, you go like, man, God didn't give it to me. No, he gave it to you. But, but you never learn how to submit to authority. So therefore, the level that you receive is not enough. So why, why, why are people leery or afraid of submitting to authority? So you guys ask all the right questions. You make it easy for me. <laughs> It's because you did it one time, and it didn't work out. Somebody uh, misused their authority. Somebody uh, uh, tried to control you and all that kind of stuff, and you go like, I ain't going to submit. Now listen to me carefully, because most Christians are dealing with one thing or another in this vein, and that is that they shut down scriptural principles because somebody misused them. Come on. And you know what? If it, the principles are there, that you, you can forgive, and, but don't throw away the principle. If somebody hurt you, my friend, or somebody uh, 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 misused their authority in your life, guess what? That's that person's problem. And if you know it, forgive and move on. Don't let go of the principle. You're going to have to find someone that you can submit to. Well, 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 pastor, you're saying that because you're the pastor. I have to submit myself. On Thursday, I fly out to New York City, my hometown, and uh, to speak at a conference. Where? At my pastor's church. Right? I have to submit. My level of authority is going to be determined by how much I submit to my pastor. There's no way around it, guys. Are y'all here? Are we good? So then he says, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. So wait, the issue was submission. But he ended up saying, what I saw was faith. I have not seen such faith in all of Israel. And the disciples were right there by his side. They must have felt like, geez, man, I thought we were tight. You know, yeah, but I have not seen this kind of faith. What faith? The faith that's manifested in being able to humble yourself under authority. Come on. Are y'all with me? Okay. So, of course, the authority is who? It's God. But then he delegates authority to people that he will use to advance his kingdom. Right? And so if you've ever been in another church or whatever, you're always going to have a pastor. And guess what? That is your authority. Yeah, but you don't know. The pastor is your authority. He's the one that God gave delegated authority to preach the word and to teach you and to pray for you and to do all those type of things. Now, again, authority is never meant to control. Hey. It's never meant to, uh, uh, um, to control, to manipulate. Come on. To pressure. And that's why I am the way I am. Some people say, you know, you're, you're kind of weak because you don't force. Of course not. Of course not. I'm going to stay biblical. I don't care what people say. Well, I have people come into, into my office say, Pastor, uh, Pastor, uh, well, uh, first of all, you're calling me Pastor. So that means that you're looking at me as your spiritual authority. When you go, if you work in a bank, I think some of us do, <laughs> and, and right, you have a position, and there's going to be someone there that's your authority. Right? I go to the bank, I have no authority. None. I have to always fight with the tellers. Give me my money. <laughs> oh, you got to sign this and you got to do it. It's my money and I want it now. <laughs> Are y'all following me? Right. I have no authority there. Why? Because I'm a 
pastor and I have authority in the church that God has given us to steward. Are y'all, are y'all with me? Right? So they come and they say, well, you know, I just want to let you know. I already know you're not acknowledging my authority. Amen. <laughs> I got to get spiritual. Y'all, y'all looking at me funny. No, seriously. Why? Because you're letting me know something already. And then they take it one step further. God told me. And what I feel like doing is, this, can you please get out of my office? Serious. But I'm a, I'm a nice guy. I don't do that. <laughs> but really, it's like, I'm not angry at you. But you're not following proper protocol. Because if you come to me and say, God told me, then what do you want me to do? Why? Are, why? I mean, there's conversation over. Well, you're not hearing me. Now, why would I take that stand? Because of what we're learning. Right? Your authority, your delegated authority, the measure of it is going to be based on your measure of submission to authority. Yes or no? Right. And then they go like, well, you know, this and that. Okay. And because authority does not control or pressure or do any of that, I go, I'll, I'll pray for you. Does that mean that I said yes? No. I'm saying I'll pray for you because you already made up your mind. You heard from God, this and that and the other. And... What's the point? Okay, y'all ain't helping me. I kind of knew you wouldn't. No, I'm only kidding. So, because it's not, authority is not to control, it's to submit. Are you here? And some of us have come from churches where the pastor used his authority to control, to manipulate. I've seen it. I've come from a church like that. You know, and I, I always said, I'm not going to do that. Somebody told me, well, why didn't you tell me what to do? Because you told me what you were going to do. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for edification and not for your destruction, I shall not be ashamed. So Paul is saying, the authority I have is to build, not to tear down. If ever you're in a place where authority is tearing you down, my friend, that is illegitimate authority. Come on. And, and many of us have been there. The authority, the delegated authority that God has given us, Pastor Norm and I, is to build up. We want to build you up. We want to be positive concerning the word of God is why I share the way I do. I want to empower you. Come on. So that you can walk this walk with your head up high knowing that you have authority and the devil cannot take it. Circumstances cannot take that authority because it's been given to you by God. And we have to learn to exercise our authority. And, and, and that's why this message is so difficult, because for the most part, we have been taught that the pastor is the authority or the apostle is the authority and that you guys just sit there and, and, and let, you know, let him do the work. Come on. No, and, and I go, no, it's your responsibility. Pastor, you, would you pray for me concerning this? I sure can. I couldn't agree with you. But you're going to have to exercise your authority and your, and your faith. And you have, you have to proclaim, my marriage is healed. My relationship is healed. No, come on, come on. Yeah, my money yes. is right. Yes. You well, got $2 in the bank. It's called faith. Come on. It's not, it's not you uh, uh, lying. Because there are truths and then there's the truth. Are you with me? And, and a truth can be that you don't have enough money. But the truth says you have more than enough. 
what are you going to agree with? You can agree with truth or the truth. And the truth comes from the word of God. And people say, well, I don't know. The doctor is saying that's just a truth. That's not the truth. Jesus said, I am the way. The What? He's the truth. It's what he says. And so we have to walk this walk by faith every time that we encounter something. And we, we can't go like, man, I need, I need a thousand people to pray for me. Well, that's fine because we're a body and we should pray for one another. But the bottom line is you better have the faith and exercise your delegated authority. And that's why then you'll understand how God told Moses, Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. And Pharaoh's response was, I can't even talk. He said, I'm the least in my family. I stutter. Well, you're not hearing me. So he was telling him why he couldn't do it. Because he thought, I don't have the authority to do it. But if God tells you to do it, that means he's giving you delegated authority to do it. Come on. Yeah. Right? And, and all the guys from then on, from, from Moses to Abraham and so on, why did they do what they did? Some, and then we go like, man, David was a, whoo. No, he just operated in God's delegated authority. The prophet Elijah, wow, he was this and that and the other. Uh-uh. He just operated in God's delegated authority. And, he, and we're no different than David. We're no different than, oh, come on. And see, and that's the thing that gets us. Because we measure ourselves by the way we see ourselves. We measure ourselves based on the circumstances. If my circumstances are not good, that's the way I measure. I'm no good. Hey. But you have to understand, my friend, that if God called you, and he has, and God empowered you through Jesus Christ, that you have all things. You lack nothing. You're seated in heavenly places with Christ. You are all that in a bag of chips. And guess what? That will only be manifested if you have faith. I'm going to tell you, unbelief is just complaining. Unbelief is everything is not good, everything is negative, and so that's called unbelief. Say it with me, that's unbelief. That's what it is. So if you want to know if you have faith, all you have to do is listen to yourself. That's all. Nothing's going to work. Oh my God, look at the economy. Yeah, this is, no, nothing's going to happen. Right? Because what you're, you're measuring yourself by what you're going through instead of by the word of God. Come on. And delegated authority is only, only going to flow to the level of your faith. We read it. I mean, Jesus was blown away, not so much about the guy's understanding of authority, but his faith in his authority. Amen. Let's take a break. Ken, can you just give a round of coffee to everybody? See if they... <laughs> Amen. Are you still with me? So there's two authorities, simply put. The authority in heaven and the authority of man. Does man have authority? You better believe it. If a cop tells me to stop, I'm stopping. He can be Barney Fife. And some of you are not old enough to know who that is. <laughs> but the ones who are older, they call it quick. Barney Fife is this little scrawny, you know, police and so on. Uh, you look at him and you go like, man, I'll knock that dude out. But the reason you won't do it is because he has a badge. And that badge represents delegated authority. And you go like, this guy is nothing. Yeah, but he's got the backing of the police force. Right? And so, so you have to understand that, that, that when you're dealing with something, you have a choice. That authority is of man, but I must respect it. 
But if that police says, don't ever pray again, they'll say, throw away your Bible. Now there's an issue because I am more responsible to what authority in heaven. Does that make sense? And, and, and you know, we, we've gone through that, especially in this country. Look at, look at uh, Matthew chapter 21. It says, Now when he came into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Next verse. But Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one thing. I love it, right? I love it. They always ask Jesus questions, and he said, I'm going to answer you with a question. He says, but I'm going to ask you one thing. Which of you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things? Then he asked the question, the baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? And they reason among themselves, saying, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? So Jesus was setting them up, and they knew it. But the issue is that there is an authority from heaven that a lot of times does not make sense to the authority on the earth. Hey. And that's why we have to be careful. The Bible says in Exodus that the people would not move until the cloud lifted. Hello? And they, they, were, they were waiting. If the cloud did not lift for a week, they stayed right there. It was only when the cloud lifted that they would move. Because the cloud represented God's authority from heaven. And you can do whatever you want, and some of you are, are awesome, and some of you have gifted, but you have to submit to the authority of heaven and not to the authority of men. Amen. John 19, verse 10. Then Pilate said to him, talking to Jesus, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have power, the word there is authority, that I have authority to crucify you and authority to release you? Jesus answered, You can have no authority at all against me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greatest sin. And that, is, that was, uh, um, what's his name? Yeah, Judas. Are you following me? So here is human authority saying, I have authority over you. He said, listen, man, nobody takes my life. I lay it down myself. Nobody has the authority to take my life. Nobody has the authority to tell me what to do. Come on. There is no authority on the earth. And that's why, guys, we have to be careful going back the, to, that we always have to measure what we do and our authority based on heaven. Come on. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, and we see it all through the Bible, all the time. We see it all through the Bible. The Lord saying, I'm more powerful but I'm going to give you the authority and the power, here it is, to advance my kingdom. So you'll know authority from heaven is because the goal is to always advance his kingdom, not ours. Hey. And, and you'll know man's authority when, when, when the issue is advancing that the kingdom, not, not God's kingdom, but the kingdom of the earth. That's why we have to be careful. What's your motivation? Do you realize you have authority to be rich? And that's why you're going to be rich. You're the only one that, that agreed. No, it's true. You have authority to be rich. And God's delegated authority, his promises are for us. But guess what? What he is saying, if I make you rich, is to advance my kingdom. I'm, you know, 
And if you do that first, then you will have enough to, to live comfortably and all that kind of stuff. Everything has to be to advance the kingdom of God. Everything. Everything. It's why Jesus came. Jesus came to reestablish the kingdom on earth. He humbled himself. And watch it now. And he had authority to give up his life. They didn't take his life. Nobody had that juice. Nobody had that power. He said, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. You know why? Because I'm, a, I'm advancing the kingdom of the Father. And when you thought that I was done and you beat me up and you nailed me on that cross and you were thinking that I failed, I was just exercising. Come on. The, my delegated authority to give my life to save the world. Come on. And that's why that's so powerful. Yeah, because when you thought it was all over, I was just starting. And when you left me in that tomb and you said, hey, man, he's gone. Uh-uh. On the third day, my friend. On the third day. Why did he rise? Because he had delegated authority from the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So look, man, we got, we got all kind of issues. Um, I, I'm believing that Holy Spirit will release this truth in us that we can see real change. Do we have the authority to win the city for the Lord? Absolutely. You know why? That's advancing God's kingdom. Hey, do we have the authority to, to walk in newness of life, in power? Come on. Forgiving Loving? Absolutely. We have been given delegated authority by God to do it. And that's why the Bible keeps telling you who you are, not who you think you are. I say get over it. Get over it. Oh, man, you don't know what I've been through. Get over it. Pastor, you're so insensitive. <laughs> it's not. It's the Bible is the one that says it. Get up. Rise up. Right. Get moving. Start declaring. Because if you don't allow God to help you declare, the world will do it. And the problem is you'll be declaring the wrong thing. How does that happen, Pastor? There you go again asking the right questions. I love it. It's because when you're going through stuff or you hear Write the news. Gas is going up to $6 a gallon. And what you proclaim based on that is going to be what the world wants you to say. We can't make it. What am I going to do? Get a third job. This and that. No, my friend, you're declaring what the world wants you to declare. Because whatever you declare comes to pass. So then, then you are now complaining about something that you are causing in your own life. Hey, no, it's the truth. It's just the way that it works. The Bible says that the power of what? Life and death is in the tongue. I can't say it enough. Faith is always released by what you say. If you say to this mountain, not like, Oops, no, nah, I don't, no, nah, I think I'm going to go this way right here, because that mountain is too big. Are you all here? You heard me say it uh, last Sunday. The, the, the disciples come to Jesus, they were still immature, say immature. You know, we, we, we can't get on them. They were still immature, they were learning. And even though they saw the miracles of Jesus, they, here they are in this big crowd, and, 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 and they're hungry, they're tired, the crowd. And we're talking about thousands of people. They're all around, and, and they go to Jesus. You know, come on, Jesus. Send them home. Let them go get something to eat. Let us go get something to eat. And here it is, delegated authority. You feed them. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, it's like 
doesn't compute. Look at the thousands of people. We are in a desert. There is no food except that this one kid that has five loaves and two fish. You're not hearing me. Now, if God tells you to do something that seems impossible, guess what? Do it. Because it's not your power, it's not your authority, it's not your intellect. If he tells you to do it, he's delegating power for you to do it. And if the disciples were a little more mature, they said, we got it. We, we get it, Jesus. We've seen everything you've done. Jesus, have a seat. We're going to take care of this. Kid, how, what you got? Well, I have five loaves, two fish. Just give it to us. Got this, Jesus. Give it to us. And then they would have done the same thing Jesus did. Instead of complaining, they would have said, Lord, I thank you. Oh, you're not hearing me. It was what they were saying that sabotaged their faith. Are y'all here? But they turned around. I mean, he turned around and he blessed the little, little that they had. And then they fed thousands. Are y'all here? If God tells you to do something, if God says you can do it, my friend, agree with him in faith. And the Bible says that God says, tells us that we are more than conquerors. Okay, let me tabulate, calculate, if that's true. Just lost my job. Whew. Can't deal with this. Got, don't have much money. Uh, the last time I tried this, it failed. Are you hearing me? And then you convince yourself that what God says is not true. Based on what? Your experience. Oh, you're here. I mean, am I lying? It's the truth. But if God says you're more than a conqueror and you said, yes, sir, I am. You don't look at your circumstances or you don't look how you feel. You say, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to be talking loud and talking all that stuff. Yeah, unless somebody give you a $1,000 bill, you, you're going to shout. <laughs> Seriously, we, we have to walk this thing, my friend, and we have to walk it by faith. We have to believe God. And I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about because, I mean, I, you know, 40 years of being in the Lord, I mean, don't you think I've experienced some things? Until this day, I battle my emotions and feelings. Till this day, I have to guard what I say, and sometimes it comes out anyway. Come on. And then what I do is I cancel that. I cancel that last remark. No, I am not poor. Oh, you're not hearing me. Why? Because if you messed it up with your tongue, you can fix it with your tongue. Amen. And, 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 and we have to understand that. Now, last thing I'm going to say is remind you about that mountain. Remember when he said, if you say, the word say comes from a root Greek word that means, what? Anybody remember? Lego, right? Now, if you've ever been to Legoland, no, seriously, that is incredible. They have dinosaurs, and they have planes that they built by putting one piece next to the other. Boom, 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 boom. When they first start, you go like, I wonder what they're doing. But they have a vision. And they're putting pieces together until they accomplish that vision. Are you still here? So words are like Lego. The more negative words you speak, you're building something. Hey. Probably started like a molehill, but now it's a mountain. And we go like, I rebuke you, devil. This and that and the other. The devil had nothing to do with it. You did. 
I know, I know y'all. Will you come back next Sunday? <laughs> I know you will. Are you listening? So why, why, why am I going to beat the devil up for something that I'm responsible for? And so that's why Jesus says, if you say to this mountain, in other words, he said your words created it, your words can bring it down. You may think it's too late. You may think, man, it's too late. I got to, no, no, my friend. Change what you think and change what you say. That's going to be impossible. There you go again. You know, if I, if, I say, if I say those things, you know, then, you know, people are going to take advantage of me. Because I'm saying it's all good. And they go like, oh, yeah, right. You're not, you're not in touch with reality. You're in denial. Yes, I am. I am in denial, I'm telling you right now. But what I deny is the world system. I'm in, I'm in denial of the authority and the power of the world. That's a bunch of bull. I, I just said bull. Seriously. Because I have to deny, and Jesus said it. He said, whoever denies me, I will deny you. So I have to be in denial about those things and take my stand in the truth of the Word of God and what the Word of God says. Are you all with me? And that's where we are today. The fact is that many of us are struggling in different areas. It can turn around if you choose to say the right thing. It's possibly going to be the biggest battle of faith that you will ever face. But it's the key. And then help each other. Even though sometimes our pride won't let us. Like you'll be talking all kind of crazy stuff and then your spouse says, man, you, you're, you're talking negative. <laughs> you're judging me. Don't... <laughs> Come on, we got to grow up. Amen. So I want to pray for you. I want to agree with you. Amen. Uh, I want to pray, first and foremost, foremost uh, for the families that are represented here today and the ones that are watching us by YouTube or by Facebook Live. The biggest attack is amongst families. Families represent, that's why, that's why uh, God, when he created Adam and Eve, is because he wanted family. Are you here? The devil hates families. And that's why he tried to destroy it. When Jesus came, he came to restore the family of God. Amen. And that's why sometimes we have such a hard time with, with our families and attacks on our kids and all that kind of stuff. But we know that God has given us delegated authority to speak life, amen, to our families, to speak life to our spouses, to speak life to our kids. And I know it's hard, but if you can do it, there will be turnaround. I guarantee that. Amen? So I want you to stand to your feet. The, the, the awesome thing is that if you're the only family member here, it's okay. The fact, the matter is, you have a family. And we're going to believe God right now and exercise our delegated authority over our families. From here on in, I challenge you to speak life. Right after the service, we can walk out and boom, two of you will start at each other for whatever reason. It's just the way that it is, right? Be the one that says, I choose to speak life. Come on. I speak life. 
Why? Because you have the authority to do so. Amen. And remember, make sure that you understand that the purpose of God giving us delegated authority is to advance the kingdom. Your biggest goal in life should be to advance his kingdom. It's why Jesus came. It's why he died. It's why he rose again. It's to advance his kingdom. And that should be your primary purpose in life. Everything else is gravy. Raise your hands all over this place. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Because we look at ourselves and we know we're not worthy. Just like the centurion. But yet we are worthy in your eyes. And Lord, you love us so much that you want us to operate in peace and in love and in joy. And the only way that can happen is when we receive your delegated authority and power to walk this walk. And Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that we will speak life and not death. We will speak prosperity and not debt. Father, we will speak healing instead of sickness. Father, we thank you right now because what we're saying is based on our faith in you and based on our faith in the authority that you've given us. We speak to, to family members. We speak to children. We declare in the name of Jesus, Father, that, that they are healthy, that they are healed. Father, that, that, that prosperity is theirs because of your authority. We won't declare what the enemy is saying. We won't declare what the world is saying. We will declare what you're saying because your truth reigns supreme. And so, Lord, give us, help us. Let the Holy Spirit help us to speak life. Let him help us, Father, to put everything in perspective in terms of what you've called us to do. And, Father, we'll be careful, Lord, to walk by faith and not by sight. If you, if you are a family that's been struggling or you have a family that's been struggling and so on, let, let, us, let us lay hands on you. I believe in the, the laying on of hands. The Bible is clear about that. Amen. But this is our time. This message, like I said before, I'm not smart enough to bring these messages. God is speaking to us. And God is giving us the opportunity to bring healing and to bring power into our families. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. The worst thing to see is when families are divided. The devil loves that. He came to bring division. Jesus came to bring healing and to, and to bring us together. If you're here, you, you may be wanting to pray for your family, your mom or your dad or your children or your brother or your sister. This is the time to do it. God is giving us the authority and the right to do it. And if you have faith, my friend, you're going to see it happen. You're going to see it happen no matter how impossible it seems. No matter how crazy it seems. It is going to happen. It's going to happen. Caesar, I know you're working. But stand right here <laughs> He's a worker. He's, amen. Just stand by your spouse. Stand by your partner. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What's amazing is the shift that's about to take place. Because God is real. His word is real. And we come up here by faith. You realize that when you step, you're taking a step of faith. You're saying, man, I believe this. I believe God is, has done it and he's going to manifest it. So raise your hands. Come on. 
Hallelujah. Manny, Olivia, just Julie, just lay hands on people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, you knew that those that are here were going to be here today. They needed to hear that their families are whole. That even though mothers or fathers or brothers or sisters may not even be talking to each other. But Lord, you brought this message for them to have faith and to believe. And to believe that you are the healer. To believe, Father, that you are the one that brings people together and brings families together. And you're the one that gives the grace and the favor. What seemed impossible, what seemed like a situation that would not change in the name of Jesus is changing right now. Because you are greater than any circumstances. You are greater than any situation. And Father, I thank you right now. I speak life. I speak life to families. I speak life, Lord, to to, to cousins and brothers and what have you. I speak life to them. Lord, I thank you. I speak life to marriages. And Lord, there's nothing that's, that's more challenging, Father, than, than folks that are married and, Lord, the things they go through and so on. So I speak life to the marriages. Change. I speak, Lord, uh, life to uh, uh, brothers who haven't talked to each other in a long time. Father, to, to, to young women who have not uh, have talked to their sisters in a long time, but Lord, I speak life right now. You're the one, oh God, that has, that has confirmed your word in our midst. And so all we have to do is have faith. We have to believe. And Lord, we believe in the name of Jesus. We believe. Say, I believe. Come on, say it again like you mean it. I believe. But the Bible says, just believe. And we choose to believe. We choose to believe miracles. And Father, all that you're doing is so that we can advance the kingdom. Reaching our families and reaching our friends for your glory and for your honor. Father, I speak life. I speak finances for those that have been struggling with finances. Father, I speak healing for those who have been struggling with sickness. Father, it's your word. It is true. You've given us the right. You've given us the authority to believe and to speak these things into existence. And we do it now in the name of Jesus. We declare that emotions and feelings and what we see and what we hear does not rule our lives. But the thing that rules our lives is your word. Your word is truth. And you said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the shift that's taking place right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Go on and give the Lord a good clap offering. Amen. Amen. He's good. God is good. God is good. Amen. So this is the thing, you know, sometimes we settle for a certain level. And whatever you settle for, that's what you're going to get. That's why faith is so important, because faith takes us to another level. There's even people that are doing okay. And that's okay for them. And it shouldn't be. The Bible says we go from faith to faith, glory to glory. Don't put up with just what is. Believe God for more. Some people say, well, I just want to get along. No, my friend. Don't just settle for that. Settle for a great relationship. Not just a relationship. Are y'all here? So the key is this before we close. The keys of the kingdom are in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, don't wait till the prophet comes or whatever. Though that's a blessing, we believe in the fivefold. You turn your life around and things will change based on what you say. 
there's some people that say, well, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm critical by nature. Don't even look at me. <laughs> no, seriously. And it's like, okay, you're critical by your old nature, not your new nature. Do not define yourself by who you were. Define yourself by who you are in Christ. Amen? Man, it's going to be hard. Stop saying it's going to be hard. If you say it's going to be hard, guess what? It's going to be hard. Capture every word. Isn't that what, isn't that what Paul said? Come on. Paul said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God in pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds. As a man thinks, so is he. This is what the Bible says. He said, taking every thought captive. Oh, you're not hearing me. Because you will always speak what you think. That's why the renewing of the mind is so important. The most important thing in the Bible, besides what Jesus did, is the renewal of the mind. Are, are you here? If your mind is not renewed, you're always going to say the wrong thing. Because you will always speak what you think. And he said, taking every thought captive, meaning I'm going to be conscious of what I think. Because when I say it, it's going to create problems or it's going to be a blessing. Are you all here? Right? So taking every thought captive, what? Under the obedience of Christ. Listen to me carefully. We are defined by Calvary and nothing else. So it says, taking every thought captive under the obedience of Christ, which is the cross. He died for you. You're not the same anymore. Let it go. Don't fight to be you. And you ever hear people say, just do you. No, no, do Christ. It's better. You did you. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah, do Christ. Let him live in and through you. And some people say, it's just me. Man, don't you realize what you're saying? What you're saying is that you want to remain the same. And if who you are is all that, then hey, go for it. Really. But if you know it's not, let go of just me, being just me, and be Christ on the earth. All of that has to shift right here. Listen, I'm going to ask you next Sunday to bring I got to be careful what I say I said one time you can bring your, your dog and somebody brought their dog and they reminded me what you said I did <laughs> but listen bring family friends go to your barber I can't go to mine go I mean tell them you need to come and hear the word of life. It will change your life. Amen. Would you all do that? Because after all is said and done, we are family. Come on. We are family. <laughs> he, he jumps on that. He's that opportunity. <laughs> yes. But we are. Right. Right. Well, but we are family. Listen, before you leave, Family, let's receive today's offering. Amen.